All right, I'm gonna show you some embarrassing beat sales numbers, my embarrassing beat sales numbers. I talk a lot about all the amazing parts of my job making music for a living. And look, I'm, I'm grateful for that every single day. That's a feeling that doesn't leave me. And that feeling of gratitude and appreciation has a lot of power in it. So I like to emphasize that, but a lot of people call me way too optimistic, too hopeful, maybe unrealistic. And the reality is when you work for yourself, there are gonna be ups and downs. So let's talk about some downs. This month, I think, has been one of my worst beat sales months to date. I'm not sure why I have some ideas. I wanna talk about those ideas. And then I also wanna share some information as to how you can avoid suffering too much when beat sales drop. Now, this happened at the beginning of the year too. Um, I think I was Googling how to sell drugs every other day. I didn't find any answers. I just found a trailer to some Netflix series. Now, just to be clear, this has nothing to do with that infamous screenshot of the 33 cent beat sale that I shared. I shared it as a joke. I know a lot of people took it seriously. I actually got a lot of DMs from people I know saying, how is that sustainable? That's why I don't sell beat. That's why beat leasing isn't the way to go. I had a conversation in person the other day where someone was like, why are you doing this? Why are you selling beats for 33 cents? You're, you're better than that. I really don't know what happened with that beat sale. I, I think either it was like a negotiation. This was, this was not my beat store. This was from a collaborator. So either this collaborator allowed one of their friends to send, a, you know, like a $1 negotiation and they accepted it for some reason, or it was a mistake. I made a mistake. I was so upset at myself. Somehow I set the exclusive price to a beat to $75 because that was the tempo of the beat. So I'm just gonna take responsibility for it. I think it was my fault. Immediately that day I got sold for $75. Now let me show you some real numbers. These are the embarrassing ones. These are my beat sales for the week. You know, I have a couple days left. This, this video is one that I made in advance. So this number is gonna go up, but it still is, is really, really low for me. My first instinct was to go look at my views. I figured my views had declined. Because when you think about it, right, the more eyes on your beats or potential customers, if someone is getting 500 beat plays and someone else is getting 500,000 beat plays, the person getting 500,000 beat plays should be getting a thousand times more sales just based on the law of averages, right? So I thought, all right, let me just compare my beat sales over time. My numbers aren't so terrible this week. I mean, they're average. They're not great. I don't know what happened here on April 28th, but I got a huge increase in plays. Yeah, I think this was when I did the BeatStars Takeover playlist, I think. Now, did that correspond to more sales? I, it helped sales, but the interesting thing about beat sales, you can have a crazy plays day, you know, a day when you get almost 10,000 plays in 24 hours, and it doesn't necessarily translate to sales. I talked about this recently. A lot of times artists who are looking to buy beats aren't necessarily ready to close the sale right then and there. Obviously, that's the ideal situation for you as the person selling the beats. So if you can incentivize a person either through some kind of discount, an exit pop-up discount, stuff like that that I've talked about in previous videos, that's the best course of action because you know you don't want someone to wait a month to buy your beat because a lot can change in that month. They might forget about you. But a lot of people just need time. So even though I had this spike here, that doesn't mean that 8,422 people were ready to buy a beat that day. It probably played out over the next month. Hell, I've had people contact me looking to buy a beat one day and two years later they finally buy it. I want to check out free downloads too to see if that, so like that's interesting. May 5th, I had 109 free downloads. April 28th, I only had 76. What happened on May 5th? Let's see. What were my plays like on May 5th? This is just pretty average. So there's not always a correlation between sales, free downloads, and plays. Now let's look at April 28th, because you would think that would be a good sales day with all those damn plays. More embarrassing numbers. This is April 28th. I made $82 that day. <laughs> I don't know how accurate this number is, because someone said that Stripe sales don't get reflected in your net total. I don't know if that's true or not. Someone in the comments let me know. But damn, that was rough. That was a rough day. And that plays into this overall picture of a kind of bleak sales month for me. I've talked to other producers. Of course, I talk to other producers. Otherwise, I would lose my mind. So we're comparing notes and I'm asking them if their, their beat sales are down too. And yeah, they are. There are a lot of reasons for that. Um, 
I think one is just people are transitioning into the summer. People are saving up for vacations. They're planning their vacations. They're getting outside more. And once we get reoriented to the warmer months, then, you know, something that I think helps beat sales is the fact that people are more social. There are more performance opportunities for musicians, for recording artists, rappers, singers. They're going to need more beats. And so it's a good idea to start dropping all these summer beats. We know what a summer beat is. Winter has a sound, summer has a sound. But also graduation. A lot of people have kids or are students themselves. And so they're consumed with graduation logistics or they're saving money to throw graduation events. Prom too, that's expensive for parents. Mother's Day. This weekend when this video drops, it will be Memorial Day weekend. I have a feeling Memorial Day weekend is gonna be a turning point, but a lot of people are having these extravagant parties or they're traveling, et cetera, et cetera. That takes a lot of money. Once things settle down, I imagine sales are going to even out and, and go back to normal. But, but for me, what is normal? I had to figure that out because I'm sitting here stressing out about these low numbers. What's interesting for me is because my YouTube views aren't great. They're still one of my top three traffic sources. So you have direct, you have referral, which is also direct. So I can't find a source through Google. But my organic video reach, this I'm looking at the Google Analytics that I set up. If you don't have this set up, set it up in your pro page. It's free. You can use Google Analytics for free. You just get a Google Analytics number. You plug it into your BeatStars account and it starts collecting your site's traffic data. It tracks where your traffic's coming from. If you don't know where your traffic is coming from, that's kind of a problem because then you're just taking stabs in the dark. I know my traffic is coming from YouTube. If my traffic weren't coming from YouTube, do you think I'd be uploading two YouTube videos every single day? YouTube beat videos, I should say. Probably not. That's That might be a waste of time. I'm getting a lot from Instagram. I'm getting a lot from Google searches, but YouTube videos, and I'm not running any paid ads on YouTube, so YouTube is still a source of free organic traffic for me in spite of my low plays. Now, something weird happened with YouTube, so I wanted to know if this correlated to my low sales numbers. So there was a day when I messed up and I accidentally uploaded the same beat video to YouTube twice. I meant to upload two different beat videos. That happened over this last week. And as a result, only one video came up because I deleted the other one at the last minute. And then the week prior, YouTube was down. And so I uploaded two videos, but they never appeared. They were never published. So I had an entire 24 hour period where not a single beat video was uploaded to my third most effective traffic source, which is YouTube. And so I thought, you know, maybe my views decreased and that decreased my sales. As you can probably predict, there wasn't really a correlation between that at all, because as we've seen, it's hard to predict what's going to happen when you're going to sell beats. May 18th was the day that that not a single video, not a single new beat video dropped on my YouTube channel. And that particular day, I had slightly above average views or plays, I should say, on my beats. Now, does that mean I should just abandon YouTube and stop uploading? No, I, I can guarantee you that if I did that maybe i'd be good for a month but so then i thought all right let me just get really detailed you know plays traffic sales free downloads those those terms are kind of abstract let me just compare what my income was like at this time last year compared to how it is this year because i'm freaking out i'm like damn i google's not gonna help me sell drugs what can i do to make some money Shout out to everyone suffering from crippling anxiety. We tend to be dramatic. So here's what I found, and this surprised me. So these are my PayPal statistics. So just PayPal, not Stripe, not Cash App, not all of the other income sources that I have. This is this year. So over the last month, I'm at 10,769. Same time last year, 11,458. The difference between these two numbers is almost $700. I'm down 700 this year from last year. Should I have a panic attack over that? No, I should calm down. What is interesting though, is that I had fewer transactions this month than I did the same month last year. And my average order value was higher. Prior to this year, what I was doing was I was allowing my exclusive beat sales to only occur via the negotiation option. What I mean is, when I uploaded a beat here under the exclusive ownership option, I would just click this all the time, enable make offers only for exclusive licenses. Now I just enter a number. 
here's what I've learned about negotiations. I will get negotiation offers all the time. You've probably experienced something similar. Someone will offer $400 for a beat, $500 for the for a beat, usually 400 because that's, that's the minimum by default. I'll look at it and I'll say, yeah, I'll accept this one. Accept it, I never hear back. Because sometimes these negotiation offers happen at three in the morning, my time. Could be someone in Germany, could be someone in the UK, could just be someone that works third shift, but I'm not awake to approve that negotiation. So they forget about it because I take too long. So setting my price, my exclusive price to a number that I'm comfortable with has increased my exclusive sales. And so that's why I think if we go back to my uh, PayPal income, we see that the average order value is higher because exclusives cost more than, than leases. In spite of having fewer sales, my per average value was higher than it was last year. You know, am I ecstatic about these numbers? No, I would have liked myself to come out 700 ahead, not behind. But I also think there is more economic uncertainty this year than there was last year. So as long as it's not some kind of drastic drop, I think I'll be all right. So if you find yourself in a sales slump and you're freaking out, first of all, breathe. Second of all, check your analytics just to troubleshoot and see where you may be able to isolate some sort to drop in traffic on one platform or another, something straightforward. If you can't figure that out, it might just be consumer behavior of the economy, who knows. Now, some suggestions though. Now for me, I have multiple revenue streams. I'm always encouraging producers to have that. So whether you're uploading your beats to Spotify and you're collecting royalties that way, that's not really a, a big traffic source, or sorry, an income source for me. Um, for me, there's DJing, there are sample kits, there are placements, and then therefore performance royalties, mechanical royalties, all of these different royalties coming through micro syncs. I'll talk about those in a second. There are regular customers who purchase custom beats from me. Those are sales generally generated outside of BeatStars. And did I say that already? Sometimes I get brand deals, influencer deals, especially on YouTube. There are just a lot of options. And so I encourage you to explore those options. Find ones that, that you enjoy. Not Don't just do something because you think it's going to be a moneymaker. Actually enjoy doing it. Like I enjoy DJing and making samples. And those are things that I can do indefinitely just because I enjoy them and I'm decent at them. So that's my number one suggestion. Figure out what else you can do. And if you have the time to pursue these other creative outlets that become new income streams, figure out how to make that happen. Another suggestion I said I would talk more about microsyncs is this. If you have produced some songs that are doing really well on YouTube, especially YouTube, but you know other streaming platforms to an extent, and you're not getting any money from them directly, Try reaching out to a platform like Create TV. If you don't have hit songs yet, or you just want comprehensive royalty collection via a pub admin deal, I'm sure you're familiar with BeatStars Publishing. They do that, and I believe they do collect micro syncs. Song Trust is the same way. They collect micro syncs as well. All pub admins collect performance royalties. It just makes things easier because basically everything that falls under the underlying composition umbrella as far as royalties are concerned will be collected by your, your pub admin. But the reason I'm singling out micro syncs is because nobody collects them, seriously. In fact, so few people collect them, even major artists. There was a scandal, someone just went to federal prison because they were claiming ownership of underlying composition splits for unclaimed YouTube micro syncs. So the micro syncs are just, you know, YouTube's way of paying not direct ad revenue, but money specifically for music, for like a streaming royalty kind of. And so because a lot of people just don't even know that that's, that, that money is available to them, they don't claim it. And so then scammers come in and they take hundreds or thousands or hundreds of thousands or potentially tens of millions of money that isn't theirs because it's simply just sitting there not being claimed by the artists who have the rights to claim it. So I'll show you, I, I literally just registered uh, the rodeo song the other week and I got over 600 in micro syncs almost immediately. You know, they send me a spreadsheet and they're, they're collecting on all of these different songs from YouTube. Small money in the grand scheme of royalties, but if you're having a week like this where you only make about a thousand dollars that extra 600 makes it sixteen hundred dollars now that's a lot better it looks a lot better than a thousand dollars a week right and hey it's your money collected so there are ups and downs in the music business i don't know that there's a way to make yourself 
completely bulletproof when it comes to these economic uncertainties other than just getting filthy rich right now and investing it correctly and generating lots of money and if you've done that please email me i i want to learn but having multiple revenue streams will help and then also being aware of all of the different analytics that you have access to will also help potentially isolate where there could be an issue in your overall marketing strategy hope that helps much success to you peace